everyone, this is Tubbs from Canto Cousins. Today I'm bringing you what is the play for Malmo. So Malmo Regionals is coming up, it's on the 16th or thereabouts of February. And it's going to be the first tournament to introduce the new set Ultra Prism. So I thought I'd bring you this set of wonderful cards. I'm sorry that I don't have a lot of them on here, I haven't scanned any codes yet. <laughs> so basically what I'm doing is bringing you a list of cards that are either doing well, have done well, and could potentially do well. Techs, things you should be testing, things you should be looking out for, things you prepare for, etc, etc. So, I'm just going to work from left to right, top to bottom, etc. So, because I don't know why it's laid out this kind of way, but anyway, we'll, we'll just jump into it. So, first off the list, we've got Silvalli. If it brings it up, there we go. So, Silvalli, as I've featured in my Silver Valley Garb list before. Its ability gives all basic Pokemon that you have free retreat. So, quite a niche ability if you're playing stuff like, I don't know, Necrozma, like in my Silver Valley Garb list, or you play Silver Valley Steel as you play Registeel, which has like three retreat. So, giving it free retreat, it's quite a niche, cool ability to have. It has two attacks, both for three energy cost, three colorless energy cost, I should say. One of them, 120, and attach a basic energy from discard on your bench. That's the main one I focused on before. The second one is Rebel. It does 50 times the amount of your bench Pokemon, uh, the opponent's bench Pokemon, sorry. So, again, that's a, another big hitter. The reason we're profiling it today is because it gains two new memory tools. So, we obviously had the Psychic and Fighting type, but now we get a Fire and Lightning type. So, you can also hit stuff like ho -Oh and Celesteela for weakness. And... Again, like stuff like Decidueye and Galissapod with your fire memory. So that's something to watch out for. So Valley Steels could be quite popular in the future, depending on how how well the tournament goes. Next up we've got Hooper. So I'm gonna focus a little bit more on both of the mill decks because in Leipzig there was a ton of mill decks. Mainly because it does very well against something like Galissapod Zoroark, where they two shot things, they never really have a massive attack and they're constantly drawing through their deck. Obviously, if they're drawing cards from their deck, the quicker you win, and that's why Mill does well against that. Also, I don't think it can match up with the time limit, so there's a lot of ties if you go to that matchup. So, a lot of people are using this just because it's good right now, because there's not a lot of big hitters, one-shot one decks, and Hooper is a massive pain to get around. Can't be, effect, can't be damaged all effects of attacks by EX and GX Pokemon. So that's another thing you should be testing for. You shouldn't really tech against it, but as long as you know how to play the matchup, you should be okay. The next one is the first Ultra Prism card. It's Weavile. So for one colorless, it does 10, and the opponent is auto asleep. And for one dark energy, it does 50 times the amount of abilities your opponent has in play on, on their Pokemon. So that's really cool against a lot of things, really. If you think that the, um, the format's very ability-based, and we're actually gonna get to that a little bit later, but if you think against something like, something, let's say something like Galispod Zoroark again, you've got Zoroark has an ability, Lele has an ability, everything like that. The more they have, the more damage you do. So if they have four out, you're doing 200 damage and 230 with a choice band for one Dark Energy. That's really, really good. So if you see a Sneasel go down, it's most likely going to be this Weavile. I don't think it'll be, the other one might be played slightly to 60 to all Pokemon with abilities, including your own. So, you know, it's likely to be this one. Be careful of the other one, I guess. But if you see it one go down, just make sure your abilities are in check. If you have a lot down on the board, you know they're going to sweep you. So, one to look out for. Maybe not necessarily one that's going to be huge, but I thought I'd cover it anyway. Everyone knows this guy at Zoroark DX. Uh, he's been about dominating the standard and expanded format for what seems like forever now. <laughs> his ability trade you discard a card from hand and you draw two cards seems underwhelming but when you have two three four Zorark out you're drawing a lot of cards per turn and you're just discarding the stuff out of your hand that you don't need now or maybe it's just like extra Bridget that you play you know you're never going to use again so you just dump them and draw more cards Riotous Beating is the main attack you use for one double colorless you do 20 times the amount of Pokemon you have in play including the active so a max of 120 or 150 with a band. Tricks of GX is... It's really cool. For two dark, choose one of your opponent's Pokemon's attacks and use it. It's the lesser played attack, because people don't 
usually go for dark decks right now because of the huge rise of fighting. Again, we'll get that to later. But they use it for DC, attack, Ace of Roller, put the next one, DC, attack, and just go for the consistent two-shot. Uh, I just swung my arms around there, you can see that. <laughs> so, the reason this guy is really big uh, is mainly consistency. So, if you think about decks right now, think like your Volcanians, your Gardevoirs, stuff like that. They don't really have a built-in draw energy past Octillery and Orangaroo. Orangaroo is pretty good, but you have to have a really low hand size. So you've got to be able to get stuff out of your hand really quickly to replenish your hand. Zoroark always has a built-in draw engine because it's attacking and drawing cards, basically. So that's why. So you just get your Zoroark out, you can then start attacking and drawing cards. So it's mainly they can draw more cards than you and potentially have a better out than you. They can get out of dead hands quicker, etc. So that's why Zoroark's pretty good right now. We're covering it because you are going to see it. I don't care what anyone says, you will see this in Malmo. <laughs> it does uh, go down in play against stuff like Glaceon, which, again, I'm going to cover later on. I'm going to keep saying that. <laughs> and, yeah, so just look out for this one. Make sure your deck is at least test against it, if not prepared for it. Uh, oh, here comes Garchomp. So this is mm, probably the second most hyped card of the set, or deck of the set, I should say. For a DC, it does 50 damage snipe, so much like Nine Tails GX used to. And for one fighting and a double colorless, it does 100 damage base. And if you played Cynthia from your hand, it does 100 more damage. So Cynthia, for those of you who don't know, it's you play it as a supporter, shuffle your hand into your deck, and draw six cards. So for the veterans of the game, it's much like uh, Professor Oak's new theory or Pont for short. So it's quite a cool supporter to use, and. If you're forced to use it to boost the damage output, it, you, there could be worse cards you could play. But you also play stuff like Lucario. So I don't have this on here, but if you have Garchomp in play as an ability, you get to search deck for any one card. So multiple Lucario, you search deck for your Cynthia's and your Power Pads. And Power Pad is shuffled two supports from your discard in your deck. So you just keep cycling those Cynthia's and attack a lot of damage. The reason people are quite skeptical of this at the moment is. It's a stage two, pretty much. So you have that Lucario energy, but you've got to have the Garchomp out first. So getting the Lucario out first does nothing for you. So you've got to find a way to consistently get the Garchomp out and get the Lucario out and cycle Cynthia and get two energy on Garchomp. So it's a lot to ask for, but it's, it really packs a wallop when it gets going. It's because 150 HP on a non-GX, they're taking... Well, they've got to go through six of them, haven't they? Because if they're not dealing with the Garchomp, they're dealing with something else and they're going to lose that way. Uh, the problem I see with this deck is you've got to use DC. Like, there's no way around it. And a lot of decks are playing Enhanced Hammer right now. So if you don't have the option to attach a Fighting first and you have to attach DC, it's most likely going to go. So just be aware of that. People will still give this a go. Because like I say, once it sets up, it really steamrolls. But at the moment, maybe not for Malmo because people won't, don't want to risk it. But definitely in the future to look out for. One of my personal favourites is Garni. So I used this to get 11th in Leipzig. I was meant to do a deck profile on that, but I have been fairly busy. So I want to get this video out before. Maybe I'll do it just so you guys can have a quick look. Maybe I'll do like a short video on it. But anyway, that's beside the point. Ability is once during turn, you may attach a fairy energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So energy acceleration, very, very nice. We always like energy acceleration. One fairy, 30 times the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon. So if they're stacking a load of energy on their active, you've then got an attack for one that does a lot of damage because they've put a load on, and you can accelerate yourself to do massive damage. Really, really cool card. And it's GX again for one uh, fairy. Shuffle 10 cards from your discard into your deck. That's really cool. I mean, you, you can get away with playing a lot of one-of cards because once you've played them, you just Twilight put them back in. So you essentially get a second go at all your one-of cards and reserving space. So I really, really like that GX. Uh, the reason this is still prominent, even though it has metal weakness, because Ultra Prism was a heavily, heavily metal-focused set, is it's still guardy, it's still really strong. Looking at Garchomp, that had fairy weakness, although you, you probably win that matchup anyway just for sheer amount of energy. <laughs> um, it's also really good because it has the Gallade, so that one-shot Zoroark, which is, like I say, the most popular card right now. 
and it just deals with a lot of things. It's got 230 HP, which is absolutely massive if you don't hit it for weakness. You've really got to find a way to take down in one shot, otherwise they just max potion or ace roller and just hit you again. So, although people say guard is dead, I wouldn't expect people to put it down right now, mainly because they've still uh, guard is still good. Guard is always going to be good. It's just whether the meta will be able to beneficially let it set up. But we'll see. I wouldn't count that out just now. We have Boswell. So Boswell actually won the Leipzig Regionals. Boswell Lycanroc with the Auxiliary, which actually came out in London. I can't remember who the name was. If someone could just remind me of that, that'd be great. Uh, Boswell's really, really good. Mainly it's first attack uh, jet punch. Just 30 and 30 to 20 your bench Pokemon. That lets you pick off loads of loads of basics. So if we're looking back, we've got obviously Zoroark who evolves from Zoro, which has 60 HP. We've got Garchomp evolves from Gibble, 60 HP. Gardevoir evolves from Routes, 60 HP. You're seeing a sort of trend here. So you're doing 30 and 30 to the bench. You can potentially take out two of their main basic Pokemon in two attacks. And it's just it's on it's on a basic for one energy. So you really don't have to find a lot to get going. And it has well, it's fighting type, so it benefits from strong energy. Strong energy does 50, you're doing choice banners 80, and it really racks up, especially uh, when you're playing stuff like Potam. A lot of people don't use that now because they're using Brooklyn Hill for consistency. But depending on the rise of evolution decks, people can incorporate Potam and do even more damage when you evolve. The Lycan Rock build focuses on max, max, sorry, max Elixir to cycle out Absorption and Knuckle Impact. So they're basically trying to ham onto the buzz while and attack you for lots as quick as possible. Depending on how many elixirs they actually hit throughout the game, or throughout the game, sorry, depending on how well they're going to do. If they only manage to get one buzzword set up and you knock it out, they're only going to be doing the jet bunch, mainly for the rest of the game. Um, that's basically the main way to deal with it. If you if it sets up, there's not a lot that can stop it, really, especially when Lycan Rock's pulling up your main stuff from the bench with Bloodthirsty Eyes. I do actually have that here. Also, it's got the GX attack for two energy, so one fighting, one colours, 50 times the amount of bench. So we saw that on Silver Valley, but for one less energy. So if you see them something bringing, uh, sorry, powering something on the bench, you bring it forward, and you attack it uh, for a big knockout with the Dangerous Rogue. So really, really big. Uh, obviously, it won Leipzig, like I've just said. So you you should be prepared for that one. <laughs> One of uh, my good friend Scott Simmons' favourite cards is Persimian. So he always talks about it. He's, his Bible is pay, <laughs> he's based around Persimian. Team play for double colourless does 30 more damage to each of your bench Persimian with a 10 base. Uh, fling you don't really use because you're not actually using fighting energy. But all you do is you set up three Persimian on the bench. Attack with Persimian, it does 369, 100, 130 with a, a band. Or you can also use Mew which doesn't count a Persimian, so you've got four Persimian on the bench doing 130 or 160 with a band. Fortunately, there is a new Persimian coming out with ability. So as long as this Pokemon is on your bench, your, your Persimian's attacks do 30 more damage to your active Pokemon. Oh, your practice active evolution Pokemon, sorry. So I didn't read that correctly to start with. <laughs> so potentially, this could be there. I mean, if Scott's feeling brave, he might give it a go. But basically, you just sit with this Persimian on the bench, this Persimian doesn't specify it has to be that exact Persimian. So as long as it's got Persimian in its name like this one does, it'll still boost the damage. So you're essentially doing, if you've got three of these, you're doing 60 for team play. So 6, 12, 18, so you're doing 190 if you have all three of these Persimian on the bench. And then 220 with a band. Obviously that leaves you with one attacker and, you know, if it's prized, you essentially lose the game straight away. But it's something fun to keep at the back of your mind. There's a Lucario. I did have it on there, <laughs> so apologies for that. Uh, like I say, the ability, if you have Garchomp in place, so it's a 41 card. Uh, we've gone for like Luxio, another new one. I actually have this one from Ultra Prism. Uh, this is your opponent can't play any item cards from their hand during their next turn. So there is a Shinx. I wonder if I can bring the Shinx up two seconds. Shinx. There's a Shinx with an ability. There it is. Let's get that in there. So if you go second, this Pokemon can evolve during your first turn. So essentially, uh, they go first, they do their turn. 
la di la da you start Shinx, you go bang, straight into Luxio, bang, energy, 30 damage, you can't play item cards. Really, really cool. Obviously, people think back to when Seismitoad EX was a really big thing for a double colorless, so you do 30 and they can't play item cards. Really, really huge card. The main difference here is Luxio has 80 HP and a weakness of fighting. And as we said, Buzzroll just won a regionals. So, if you're feeling really brave, give Luxio a go. It also has... Uh, I forgot to put this in actually, apologies for that. Has an elev evolution Luxray. So this actually has an ability. Intimidating Fang. As long as this Pokemon is your active, your opponent's active Pokemon do 30 less damage before applying weakness. So as long as that Buzzwall has just one fighting on it, it's doing zero damage. So that could help you a lot. You've also got to play Shining Celebi to be able to use Luxio's attack. So it's a lot to get going, but... If you can get it up, you've got 150 HP Pokemon doing 30 damage and they can't play item cards. The way to get out of the lock is mainly to kill the Celebi at that point. So if they've got a Lux Reactive, no other Lux or whatever out, kill the Celebi. And they've literally got to stick to Vault Bot and you can use items again. So I'm not completely sold on this, but I hope someone will prove me wrong because I really like item lock. Even though some people really would really hate it. <laughs> Moving next on to Dustmane. So this is the most hyped card or combo of the set. It's not it's not very good if you look at it first glance. So for three colorless it does 60. For three metal and a colorless it does 220 and discard three. Or for three metal it does 250 but you can only use it if you're behind on prizes as a GX. So if you looked at this card and didn't know anything about the set, you would say that's a bad card, right? So we go straight over to Magnazone. So we've seen this ability before in an old Magnazone, but this time it's for metal types, so as often as you like, you may attach a metal energy from your hand to one of your Pokemon. So get this guy set up, you are then swinging, swinging for 220, you discard your three, you attach three more, and you hit again. So you are constantly got a massive 190 HP, 220 damaging attacker, with a band it does 250, which pretty much everything dies to. And you've got access to just attach them all again. If they give them a forward magazine, you attach two energy, retreat, go into the Necrozma, attach more energy, and attack. So, really, really cool combo, actually. We've seen it before in cards like Keldeo EX and Blastoise from Boundaries Crossed. We've seen it before with Pikachu EX and Breakthrough Magnazone with the Lightning types. And it's just a really cool combo to always attach energy onto a massive damaging attacker like that. The only problem I see here is... Uh, it's a stage two again. So a lot of these problems stem from can you get the Magnazone actually out? Um, it suffers from the same problem as Vicar Bulu did. So Vicar Vault was the energy accelerator and Tapu Bulu was the attacker. Because you're not using something like Guardi, who is the excellent energy accelerator and the attacker, you've got to set up two different things. So that's why it's a little bit less consistent and it loses to something like Zorark because... They use Lycan Rock in Lycan Rock Zorak or Paw Patrol as it's more commonly known. Bring up your Magnemite slash Magneton and just kill it with Riders beating instantly. So they're constantly putting early game pressure. Same with Boswell. So you've got to get that evolution out before all your basics die. That's basically the race here. So as long as you can do that, you're absolutely golden, you're fine. You should be able to keep going. However, if you can't set it up, you should be able to win. So if you're playing Dustmane Magnazone, I hope you're just focusing on consistency. Just get the Magnazone out, get the Dustmane out, keep your energies flowing. That's all you need to worry about. Don't worry about any fancy techs. If you're playing against it, take out the Magnemite and Magneton early and they shouldn't be able to power up the Necrozma. Easy to say, but potentially easy to do. Well, you don't know. That's up to you guys to test. <laughs> Next card is one of my personal favourites. It's a Alolan Dugtrio. Or Triple Swift, as my partner James Drake likes to call. <laughs> for zero energy, discard any number of metal energy cards from your hand, and it does 30 more for each one. Or 30 damage for each one, sorry. So, you can potentially have up to... Let's let's work this out for you. If you're playing something like Ribombi, which has an ability to search your deck for two energy cards, basic energy cards, and put them in your hand. So, three Ribombi is two, four, six... 6 times 3 is 180. So just for having 3 of Bombay out, you do 180 damage. Um, it has a massive downside in its HP. It's 60 HP, 
And as I just said before, like a lot of the basics, like routes and Zora, etc., all have 60 HP. So this is a stage one with 60 HP. So something like Boswell, again, is really popular, should be able to run through this fairly easy because it has 190 HP also, which means they're 10 HP out. But also they've got to be able to cycle the energy and then it'll be something like Magnazone because they don't want to attach the energy. They just want to keep it in their hand. So it's about how well you can cycle the energy and cycle the stage one that's going to die pretty much every turn, no matter what you're playing against. So if anyone can do that, mad props to you. You're, you're not really likely to see it in Malmo, but it's fun just to mention. Uh, I did bring Metagross into this, mainly because we're talking about Dustmane. So we said about having how the Magnetone attaches energy from hand. You could go the other way and just attach them straight from your discard pile. So ability, once you're in a turn, you may attach a Psychic or Metal Energy card from your discard to your active. So instead of going through the ways of stuff like... Mount Coronet, which I'll get to in a second, and Fisherman and Energy Retrieval to put them back in your hand, you can just attach them straight from the discard pile. Again, it's a stage two, but it does have a GX attack in Algorithm Search Deck for any five cards. So, it, it, it springs and roundabouts, really. I think Magnazone is the better one for me, and I'll get into that in just a second, but if you can make Metagross work, it might be better than Magnazone. We don't know. Just something else to look out for. Look at all these abilities. Garbador comes in and says, no, thank you. Uh, Garbador potentially has the ability to come back in Momo, I believe. I've been testing Garbador for quite a while. And the main problem it has was consistency. So once you set up your Garbador, you put a tool, mainly a float stone on it. Nothing has abilities. And you've just got to make sure you can draw well for the rest of the game. But it also means your Lele's are cancelled. So you can't search your deck for supporters anymore. So as long as you've got a supporter in hand, you should be okay. But if you don't, you're going to have a hard time. And that is the main reason why Garbador hasn't done well, along with, if we go to the next one. No, that's Volcanium. Go there. There we go. So this Garbador does 20 times, uh, twenty damage times the item cards in your opponent's discard pile. It was a really good combination when it came out with Drampa. So when Guardian Rising first hit, there was Drampa Garb everywhere because people were really, really... Lacks with their item cards, they were ditching them, throwing away, using loads, and Garbador just took a massive advantage of that. Now you've got Zoroark, which ended the fray. It has Psychic Resistance, 210 HP, and a, a built-in draw engine. So you don't have to sycamore all your items away, and you can just play more end, discard your supporters, keep your items out of your discard. They can do barely energy damage to your Zoroark while they do 120, which would be Garb's max HP. So... As long as you pair Garbador with something that can take out Zorark, so for example Boswell or Persimian if you're feeling really, really, really cheeky or spicy. Uh, shout out to Shay by the way. And yeah, so if you can pair it with something that hits Zorark really, really hard and you've got more draw cards and consistency. Let's put Cynthia in here actually. I haven't, I haven't put Cynthia in here. I said about it a lot. Let's put that in. Yeah, let's make her a full art. So there she is. Shuffle your hand as your deck and draw six cards. So by playing four Sycamore, four N, maybe two or three Cynthia, you should be able to have as many draw supporters as you need to make Garbador consistent for the rest of the game. Obviously, don't quote me on counts and stuff and just say, oh, Tubbs, you said this would work. I'm, I mean, I'm not guaranteeing you anything. <laughs> but... I think that's the way that Garb comes back in the format anyway. So just be aware that people may give that a go. My buddy Volcanion, we have a really, really bad love-hate relationship. I've actually picked up four Baby Volcanion and Volcanion EX five different times. So picked it up, didn't like it, sold it on, bought it again, sold it on, bought it again, etc, etc, etc. Five times. And he just doesn't seem to get on with me at all, but I really love the deck. So his ability, once you're in your turn, you may discard a fire engine from your hand. If you do, all your basic fire pickles attack do throw more damage. I was pretty slaughtered by fire <laughs> in Leipzig. Actually, you think it's a good matchup for Guardi. It's actually not, because now they're playing four Baby Volcanion and a lot of yeah, enhanced hammers. So they're powering up their Baby Volk for one fire, then then attaching them again. So it's a nice little cycle. It's all basics, so you can just 
nest ball them out, ultra ball them out, draw into them normally. So it's a very consistent deck. However, it may lose to something in the future we're going to mention in a second. So Volcanion is one I would definitely test against if you're going to Malmo because people will play it just for the Rise of Steel more than anything. Less loneliness is consistency as well. Okay, we're hitting Sylveon. So this is my buddy Max Finch's favourite deck. So hello to him. Uh, he played this in... Well, he's played it for quite a while, actually. And I was speaking to him about it, and he said it doesn't die from Ultra Prism. So let's have a look at that. One Fairy. Search deck for three cards and put them in your hand. Any three cards. Not to mention that I haven't put that in either. All of these Pokemon, or the Evolutions, evolve from Eevee. So you've got the energy evolution whenever you attach a basic energy from your hand to this Pokemon, you search for evolution Pokemon of that type. So whack a fairy on Eevee, straight into Sylveon. If you're going second, straight into Magical Ribbon. Perfect. The reason it gets better right now is because you use it as a mill deck. So search deck for three cards and everything's becoming stage two. So you've got your Garchomp stage two. You've got your Magnezone stage two. We have got Guardi, stage 2. We're actually going to go into Empoleon later, which is a stage 2. And Plea, put two of your opponent's bench pick one, all cards attached them into your opponent's hand. So you see two stage 2s, and you whack them straight back in their hand. They're no longer in accelerating energy or setting up or attacking or doing any of those cool things. You are literally setting them down, and then you just play your Flagrants, etc., etc. The reason this gets better uh, when Ultra Prism comes out is because of Palpad. Like I said before, shuffle, shuffle two supports from your discard to your deck. You basically shuffle them in your deck, magical ribbon searching back out again, and you've got a really infinite loop. It means you, with Puzzle of Time, you've got four uh, Rockets Handiwork, four Puzzle of Time and four Pal Pad, and you can play a couple of Lusamine. You're really, really going to be discarding their deck very, very quickly. And it's it's not necessarily one where people will pick up straight away, but it's definitely one that people will play in Cups and maybe a further regionals depending on how well it does there. Uh, one of the Ultra Prism evolutions is Glaceon. So again from Eevee, whack a water energy on it, straight to Glaceon. Its ability is what we're focused on here is as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, your opponent's Pokemon GX and EX in play in the hand and the disc up I'll have no abilities except for Freezing Gaze, so other Glaceons for example. This is really good. <laughs> so you go straight into Glaceon Let's say turn one. Your opponent now has no wonder tag from Lele. They don't have any trades from Zoroark. Let's just go for here. They don't have Secret Spring. They don't have Gyro Unit. They don't have Bloodthirsty Eyes. Uh, but, 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 but they don't have Geotech System, which is why I said uh, about Magnezone over Metagross, because Glaceon will just lock Metagross out of the game. At least Magnezone doesn't get shut down by free, uh, Freezing Gaze. Yeah, sorry, I was freezing, freezing Glare. <laughs> The reason this is really hyped is because, like I say, turn one, you just shut off your opponent's Lele and they can't set up. For an extra DC, you're doing 90 and 30 to one of their bench. So you're essentially putting them on a timer. As long as you can get out of the timer, so if they're going first, make you Glaceon. As long as you've got a way to get out of the lock, so you're playing like multiple Bridget, for example. If you're playing a deck with three Bridget and three Lele, you know, odds are that you're going to have a Bridget in your hand as well. If you don't, try and figure out a way around it or play four Bridget. <laughs> but like I say, if you can get out of the lock, this should be a fairly easy matchup because they're usually going to go for quad Glaceon just so you can't Guzma out of freezing gaze. So you're on a timer. They go first, they evolve into Glaceon and you've got freezing gaze. So if you can't get out of it, they attach a DC and start attacking your basics. If you can get out of that, they're only doing 90 damage, maybe 120 with a band. So... I don't know. I, I would definitely expect this because people think it's going to be the free wins. So they think if they can just evolve into Glaceon, they'll get free wins, mainly because people won't set up. And because a lot of people are going to play Zorak anyway. If you're playing Hooper Mill, you should be okay because it's not an EX or GX Pokemon and they can't attack you. So Glaceon players, watch out for Hooper Mill. <laughs> Everyone else, watch out for Glaceon. If you're not prepared for Glaceon, you should be playing lots more consistency cards. It's definitely one you should test against. I can't stress that enough. And another evolution from Ultra Prism, and it has an ability. 
This Pokemon, if this Pokemon is an active Pokemon, you may heal 50 damage from one of your Pokemon that has any energy attached to it. So obviously you can't use that if Glaceon's active, but it's a pretty cool ability to, to have if you're active. So you attach a Grass to Eevee, straight to Leafeon. I mean, if they've attacked your Eevee for 50, more for them because you heal it straight away. And it makes them sad a little bit because they couldn't do 60. <laughs> the GX tax is what we're focusing on here. For one Grass, you may evolve each of your bench basic Pokemon or sorry, for each of your bench based Pokemon, search your deck for an evolution card and evolve them, essentially. So this is really, really cool if you go second. So if you're not locked down by Glaceon, you Lele for your Bridget. So, for example, people are pairing it with the Sidua GX. So you Lele for your Bridget for three Rowlets, attach Grass Energy to your active EV and Grand Bloom GX to go straight into three Dartrix. Next turn, you go Decidua, Decidua, Decidua. Really, really optimal play, mind you. So if you can get all that going, massive props. <laughs> In my testing, I found it's a little bit slow and it doesn't always happen like that. So if you can get the Grand Plume off sort of turn three latest, you should be okay. If you get it off any later than that, I don't think there's any chance you're going to be winning that game. So building this deck, I would recommend playing a lot of Flight Stones and a lot of Grass Energy and a lot of EV. And then just go from there. Just make sure you can get the turn one Grand Bloom. The other way to play this is with Sunny Day Lorantis. So do the same again. You Lele for your Bridget or just Bridget. Three for Mantis, Grand Plume into three Sunny Days. You then attach a DCE to Leafeon. So Solar Beam does 110. Plus 20 for every Sunny Day Lorantis you have on the board. So it's 246. You're doing 170 or 200 with the choice band. Which coincidentally actually knocks out a Glaceon. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe I found the answer already. So... That is the list I've made for Malmo. If you're going to Malmo, best of luck to you. I couldn't make it myself. I'm quite sad about that. But I am going to Stuttgart for the expanded regionals, so I'll see you there. If I've missed any out, I apologise. Just leave it in the comments below and so people, uh, sorry, so other people can pick up on it. If you think you disagree with anything, let me know. If not, happy testing. Thanks for watching. You've been watching Kanto Cousins. And... I need to get some Ultra Prism codes. Thanks very much. I am so good at this. I just realised that I'd forgot to do Empoleon, which is the very last card in the bottom. Um, this is actually a really cool card, and I can't believe I didn't put this in the video straight away. So this is just a little add-on to the end, because I am so dumb. I really want to feature this, and for some reason PTCJ put it at the bottom right, and obviously they don't like it very much, but anyway... For one water and one colourless, it does 20 times the amount of each bench Pokemon, both yours and your opponent's, just bench Pokemon, not like Zorak, which includes the active as well. So if both benches are full, it does 200 damage. Yep, just make sure that's right, yep. And 230 with a choice band for two energy. It's also a 160 HP non-EX or GX prize attacker, so they only take one prize for it. So if you can get multiple and perfectly on set up, you're swinging for a possible 230, or 200 if you're attacking something non-EX or GX yourselves. They're taking one prize after hitting 160. It's weak to Lightning, which there isn't a lot of Lightning about. I mean, you may see Luxio like we mentioned before, but there's not a lot of that going around. So if you can set up multiple Empoleon, and they can not hit 160, you just switch between them. So I think it's really cool. The problem, again, is a stage two, so you've got to get it set up. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to my friend Jason. He was the one who originally sent me this and just, like, look more into it. Because I wrote it off, mainly because people can play Parallel City to limit your bench and just sort of hold their basics in hand. So it, it's swings and roundabouts. If they hold their basics parallel to you, you've then got to set up your Apoleons, get rid of the parallel, somehow make them base, bench basics. You know, it's, uh, I'll probably do a deck profile a little bit later because it's something I've been working on myself. However, if you see it in Malmo, people have been testing it for a while and maybe they'll come up with a better list than I can. Something to watch out for. And I'm really sorry for all the Empoleon lovers who are waiting till the end of the video and didn't actually see it. So thank you again for listening to me. I'm sorry about that. Please forgive me and watch again. Bye.